Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the aldol reaction. The aldol reaction, uh, this, this video on the aldol reaction is the first in a series of videos about uh, carbonyl condensation reactions in which carbonyl compounds can act as both nucleophiles and electrophiles. In this video, I'm just going to talk about the general uh, overview of the aldol reaction, uh, its mechanism, and, and what happens. So, in, in this, so an, an aldol reaction is a reaction between two aldehydes, typically. Those ketones can react in the aldol reaction, and we will talk about that uh, upcoming. And the product of this reaction... is a molecule that is an aldol. Uh, so aldol is not a person's name, but actually a description of the product. It's an aldehyde and an alcohol. And this is typically done in base. From uh, a mechanism standpoint, what happens is that one molecule or some of the aldehyde is converted into its conjugate base. And so for this reason, uh, we often use weaker bases like sodium ethoxide. So I, actually, let's just use that. Um, because it, if we use a strong base, we'd convert all of the aldehyde into its enolate, and we wouldn't have any left to be nucleophile. And negative charge. Yeah, actually, for sort of sanity, let's bring this over here. Okay. And so what we have after we've converted some uh, we have some of our aldehyde as a nu in, in a nucleophilic role and some in an electrophilic role. And then the mechanism of this reaction is, should look reasonably familiar. The enolate nucleophile acts as it would and does, an elect, or does a nucleophilic addition on the other aldehyde molecule. And then this aldehyde molecule needs to pick up a proton from somewhere, or this uh, anion needs to pick up a proton from somewhere. Uh, let's use, since I started with sodium ethoxide, it's likely that this reaction is done in ethanol as a solvent, so we'll just use that. And then that gives us our aldol product. If our, you know, if we used a different aldehyde, so you know, let's use, uh, let's use bute now. In this case, I'm not going to draw both molecules of bute now, but you should recognize that we need two molecules of bute now in the balanced equation. One molecule of butanol becomes the nucleophile. The other is the electrophile. But all the other carbon-carbon bonds in the structure need to stay. And so we should be able to identify hmm, here we go, the bond that was formed when this reaction occurred. And I'm going to draw this dotted line here through it. And there should be one, two, three, four carbons, one, two, three, four carbons on, on each side of the bond. So, you know, thus, if you were asked to try to figure out hold on. How one might go about making this aldol product from a particular aldehyde, all you need to do is look for the aldehyde carbon, look for the alcohol, 
And the bond between the alpha carbon to the aldehyde and the alcohol carbon is the one that is being made. Let's see, actually, I have too many carbons in my product. Hold on a moment. It's the one that is being made in this reaction. My, uh, we'll have some troubles. All right. So, so actually, let's use a squiggly line to represent that this is the bond that's going to be formed as this aldol reaction proceeds, and the aldehyde itself is this aldehyde. Uh, there's a slight variation on the aldol reaction called the aldol uh, condensation. Uh, and it's called condensation because the, molecule, the reaction gives off water that would boil out of the reaction. This is a kind of neat outcome. Here, let's, uh, let's, take, let's take this butanol example. If you were to heat this reaction up uh, in a way where you were able to remove the water that was formed, instead of getting an alcohol in the product, you would get an alkene. And so rather than redrawing the entire mechanism, let's just draw the mechanism from the aldol. So for, draw the mechanism for the elimination step. We have this alpha hydrogen, which is slightly acidic. It can be deprotonated. And then that generates an enolate anion. And then that enolate anion can undergo loss of leaving group to form the, the alkene. This is a little bit different than the elimination mechanisms that you may have seen in the past in that the proton transfer happens first and then the loss of leaving group happens second. Uh, this can happen because the conjugate base is resonance stabilized and because the, the product as it forms is conjugated, so there's some stability there. This uh, elimination mechanism is sometimes called the E1CB mechanism for E1 uh, conjugate base. Because it does happen to be a unimolecular reaction, the rate, the second step is rate determining and the concentration of that anion only depends on the concentration of the aldol compound itself. Okay. This concludes my video introducing the aldol reaction and its mechanism. In the next video, we'll talk about the case of what happens when you have two different aldehydes. And then in the following video, we'll share a solution to that problem, or actually multiple solutions to that problem. Thank you for watching.